Hello and welcome to Excel 2010 using the HLOOKUP function. Brought to you by Shift Key Solutions and I am Eric Ripley. This video tutorial is in line to support the custom advanced Excel training that we did with our friends at Kaiser Permanente in California. In this video tutorial, let's take a look here. We're going to do a quick review. We have a VLOOKUP table here at the top of our screen worksheet. Down below we have our order form and to this point we've created a drop down list in cell A25 for the description column. So if I click this drop down I have a list of items to choose from. So let's click on one of these and as I click on one of these I can see that it automatically populates the rest of the information for that row. If I click in any one of these cells I'll review that I have a formula in here that's a VLOOKUP function with an IF ERROR function that's included in this formula. And if anytime we have more than one function, what do we call that? A nested function. So this is what we've done thus far. So the information that's missing from this would be quantity. So I'll just put in 10. And once I do that, it automatically populates. Again, as I mentioned in the last video tutorial, what does this do for us? Why would I go through the trouble of creating such a uh, automated form? Well, I think it's clear. It's to increase productivity. All right, so in this video tutorial, we're going to be doing a HLOOKUP. Now, before we can create our HLOOKUP formula, we need to create two separate HLOOKUP tables. So I'm going to come up here to cell F3, and I'm going to call this first table shipping costs and then down here within the range of this area I'm gonna put in the weight of the shipping and the methods which is ground two day and overnight below that down here I'm gonna create another separate table called methods that would include method and code so I'll go ahead and type that out now that I'm finished entering the the H lookup tables, I did a, some simple formatting of these tables so that it makes it a little clearer to read. Now that I've finished this, let me create a quick VLOOKUP here for my shipping code. I'll need that part of my, my next H lookup function. Now you'll notice that with this cell selected, I've already given this cell itself a name range, or I should say a name up in my name box I can see that it's shipping code makes it really simple to understand so the formula in here is going to be equals VLOOKUP I'm going to look up the shipping method which is in G18 the table array will be F10 through G12 the index number that I want to return is going to be in column 2 and I want this to be an exact match. Then I'm going to press enter and there's my VLOOKUP for shipping code. So now as I click in my shipping method I can type in ground, click my, my enter check mark, my shipping code changes to 3. Okay, so now my next step will to identify the next name range. I'm going to name this range here shipping costs. So we can take a look at our name box and we'll see that it's named shipping costs. So in my next HLOOKUP function I'm gonna do something in the order of HLOOKUP a particular cell and then in the table array will be shipping costs against the shipping codes. Let's take a look what that'll look like. Here under shipping the way I need to identify the total on that is going to be identify the shipping cost will be to identify the total and reference that against the shipping method and the shipping costs. So I'm going to put an equals H lookup and I want to look up E40. The table array will be shipping costs, so I'll just start typing that in. Shipping, there they are, there's two of them. I want cost, and then comma. Now instead of a row index number, I want to take my formula and 
look specifically right here to pull from here that will then cross-reference my weight and then the type of shipping method. So I'm going to put in shipping code here. There it is, comma. Now in this case, I do not want an exact match. Because there's a variance there, I want it to be just true. Or for that matter, I'll leave it blank. Now I'm going to click um, my check enter mark. And there's my shipping costs. We can see that the shipping cost would be 475. If I look up here underground, there it is, 475. And the weight in this case was 0.1. And, and I have 1.25 pounds. Pretty simple. Well, that concludes my video tutorial. I hope this was helpful. And if you didn't know before we started this, well, now you know. And again, I strongly encourage you to share this knowledge with as many people who might need help with this. And also remember that if you didn't do it this time, be generous with that pause and play and rewind button that's included. Thanks for joining me, and don't forget to comment.